Hi everyone and welcome to this section. Here I'm going to show you how to create an exact clone of the ChatGPT using the OpenAI API. And in this first video you will create the backend of the ChatGPT clone by using the OpenAI API and Flask. Those are two tools that you already learned separately but now you will see how they can work together. So let's open PyCharm by writing PyCharm in the search. And here I will create a new project called chat GPT clone. Okay, so the Python virtual environment will be automatically set up. And so the next steps would be to create a Python file. So let's create a new Python file and I'll call that file main.py. So here I will need to import two libraries. Now, as I said, we're going to use Flask and OpenAI, so let's import them. Let's do from Flask import and firstly, I will install this package into our virtual environment. Okay, and once installed, I will import Flask request and the render template libraries. We need all of those libraries in order to operate our application. Then I will import the OpenAI. So let's do OpenAI and I will need to install that as well. Okay, great. Now the next step is to build a Flask application. So let's do app equals Flask name. So this line here will start our Flask application. And then let's do openai.api key. And this will be your API key. So I saved my API key from the previous video. And this is what I'm going to be using. But if you want to create a different key, you can simply go to your OpenAI account, select personal, view API keys and here you can create a new key. So once you have the key selected, we can now run the Flask application. So let's write at app.road and then I will do a slash. Okay. And then let's do DEF and I will call this function index. Okay. And here we're going to render the main theme template of the application. And what that means is that we need to create an HTML file which we will do in the next video and by going to this page which is going to be our root page we will see that HTML template with our application. So let's do here return render template and this is the function that we imported and then let's write the name of the file that we want to render. So let's do index.html. In the next video I will show you how to create specifically that file. Now, after you are done with that, let's create another page and let's do app.road and here I will write get, okay, so this will be our get page and here in that page we're actually going to run our open AI application. So I'll create a function, so let's do def get chat response or actually let's do get bot response and after that let's do user text so this will be the text provided by the user so let's write here request dot arcs dot get and then here i write msg so the whole idea is that uh, wherever you write in the field that is going to be displayed in front of you it will be assigned to this user text variable and then we use that variable to pass it to our chat so this will be the message that we will send to the artificial intelligence to understand it better, I can actually show you the final application or the final result of our work, which is going to be this open AI GPT chatbot and the user will be able to add the request to the chatbot here. So when we press the submit button, we will get that request, assign it to the user text and then you will see how later on I will pass this user text to chat GPT. Also later, once you are done and you make this app by yourself, I will show you how to use it and you see how similar this is to the original ChatGPT. Now let's go back to our application. So here I'll write response equals to openai dot and here let's do completion then create and here we can pass all the arguments in order to create a request to the openai API. So let's add the parameters you are already familiar with them so let's do engine equals to text dash da vinci dash 003 and then let's assign our prompt so as i said the prompt will be equal to the user text okay after that let's assign max tokens so i'll do max tokens and this will be equal to 1024 
then our end number will be 1 since we want only one response. I will not assign any stop keyword so I will make this argument equal to none. And finally the temperature I will make it equal to 1 or we will expect the exact and the most accurate responses. So once we are done let's now take from our response the exact answer. So let's do answer equals response choices dot zero or actually without a dot so let's do just zero and then we'll do text okay so this is how we get the text from our response and then let's do return so since we're in a function we need to return something and what i want to return is actually the answer that we've got based on the request that we sent so i will do str answer this will make sure that we return our answer in a string and the backend of your application is completely done. The only last things that I need to do is to write the code for running the application. So let's do if name equals to main, then let's do app.run. Okay, so this is your complete application, guys. It took us about 13 lines of code to do the backend for that app. So that was pretty easy. That would be everything for today. And in the next video, I will show you how you can build the HTML for that application and most importantly, where to place it. Something that many web developers get wrong and for this reason, their applications are not running. Thanks for watching.